Hi guys. Hello. Welcome back to our channel. So today we are going to discuss with you the secret of keeping a healthy dubia colony. Okay guys, so it is no doubt that dubia roaches are expensive, much more expensive than the red runners, also known as the Turkish Dan roaches. Mm -hmm. So we would like to share with you our experiences and some of, of the tips um, on how to keep dubia roaches healthy. So we are going to first address why are dubia roaches much more expensive. Okay. Than, than other roaches. Mm. Alright, dubia roaches are generally more expensive because of the fact that uh, they are very slow growers. They grow really slow, unlike Turkish Tan roaches. As you know, Turkish Tan roaches, they grow very fast. Mm -hmm. And then dubia roaches, they grow really slow, although they have very long lifespan. Mm. Another reason is also because of the difficulty in breeding dubia roaches. When I say difficulty, I do not mean that they breed, they are difficult to breed. They breed easily, but to maintain them consistently um, alive, um, a consistent colony, that is often time more difficult than most people think. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't get a lot of question of why their colony die on them. Mm -hmm. So, the, 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 this is part of the reason why I think um, dubia roaches are generally more expensive. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of times, um, people have the misconception that a successful colony is a big colony. Like, in order for you to have a lot of baby dubia roaches, you have to have a lot of adults. dubias. You have to a lot, have a lot of um, adult dubias. So yeah. they will spend so much time and effort into enlarging the colony, mm -hmm. expanding the colony. This uh, is mm -hmm. where um, quantity doesn't equal quality. Yes. Mm. Uh, many times, uh, new breeders they put too much effort and too much time into expanding the colony itself. Mm -hmm. They try to have a lot of babies. To mm -hmm. them, successful dubia colony is a big one. One that enables them to have a lot of yield, a lot of babies. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure a lot of um, dubia uh, breeders out there who may be breeding for their own use, for their pets or especially who are breeding to sell. Their target is to have a lot of babies. Of course, you want to have a lot of babies to sell, right? You know, so if you have a lot of animals to feed, then you need a lot of babies. Especially if you're feeding bearded dragons and stuff, they eat a lot. Mm -hmm. Each bearded dragon can, baby bearded dragon can consume up to forty to fifty baby to be roaches in a day in a single feeding. Mm -hmm. So you imagine how many to be do you need to maintain ten to twenty bearded dragons? And if you are a bearded dragon breeder, then how many do you actually need? Mm -hmm. See, a lot. The question now is, can your dubia colony actually sustain your need? Mm. Be, it, be it whether you're a seller or a user. Mm. So most people tend to pay so much attention to this. I need a lot of dubia roaches. I need enough dubia roaches to sell. I need enough dubia roaches to use. Mm. So they put so much effort and time into expanding yeah, dubia colonies. So I need more adults so that they can give me more babies. So they wait it out, they feed the dubia roaches, they wait it out, they, 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 they try to either buy or source out already adults, dubia they are already adults, to expand their breeding colony as in adult breeding dubias, expand the numbers of those. Or another way is they wait it out, they buy babies or juveniles and they feed them, they wait till they grow to sexual maturity, adult size, then they breed therefore expanding the total amount of colony they have. So they put too much time into this, I notice, to the extent that they forgot one important thing. Quality doesn't mean quality, uh, quantity, sorry. Quantity doesn't mean quality. So oftentimes there is a misconception here. The bigger your colony, the safer you are. They're gonna die out anyway, you say. But no, you will start what people experience is this. By the time your colony actually start expanding, you spend probably three months, six months to almost a year, and finally those baby, tiny, slow growing dubia roaches finally reach adulthood and you are very happy. Now you have a lot of 
adult dubious and you thought to yourself okay great in a few weeks time I'm gonna have triple double or quadruple the amount of babies I had a few months back so you're very happy but the problem now for you is this suddenly you notice one by one they start dropping dead like flies one by one your breeding adult females start to die one by one your females don't really give you good eggs if you notice dubia roaches they kind of carry their egg sac around put it back into their body to incubate them so sometimes you can see these egg sacs sticking out of their, their ass if you call it so and you will, may notice that they do not look so normal they may not look um, good those egg sacs may not they may be deformed and then sooner or later these um, adult size to be a start dying and their whole colony may start to get dirty and then it start to smell and then when you do maintenance you start to see some juveniles dying too and you must be thinking okay I fit I fit them right I got the temperature right I got the setup right and I've waited for them to grow to adulthood if I've done something wrong they wouldn't have grown to adulthood why are they still dying right so a lot of people have this question they say when I ask them okay tell me about it how is your enclosure when they come to me and ask me why my dubia colony start dying I will usually have a set of questions what are you feeding them what temperature is it are, are they are they kept on what kind of enclosure how big are your enclosures you see yeah we will mm. first diagnose it first yeah, yeah because, we need to pinpoint mm -hmm. where is the problem then we will give you the yep. solution true so oftentimes the answer that we get is that okay they they show me pictures too because pictures speak a thousand words mm. usually i ask my customers okay can you show me pictures because each person's definition of a big enclosure is different right mm. maybe to some people one fit enclosure is very big but to me maybe it's too small so or maybe to somebody or putting out putting it in a a room is too warm or too 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 hot or too cold but then to me when i see oh it's not good because of certain situation mm -hmm. in the room you see mm -hmm. so when they show me that the conclusion uh, that i had was it's usually very simple normally what i get is that every most of the time nine out of ten these people are doing the right thing on the surface they're doing the right thing they have um, enclosures that are at the right size they have setups that are correct they have dubias that are in the right amount in the ratio amount and they're put in places where the temperature appears right as well so what's the problem now why are they still dying you see this is where a lot of people uh, fail to notice i don't blame them because this is something that our eyes cannot see and to me this is the tip that i'm going to give in this video today so the main thing, the main tip is this. Oftentimes these people, right, you spend too much time in expanding the colony that you have forgotten health. You have forgotten that dubias are also living creatures. They need to be healthy. No point having thousands of dubias, millions of dubias, and you think, okay, I have so many, I'm gonna have a lot of babies. No, they're gonna die on you sooner or later because they're not healthy enough. So anything that are not healthy enough, they're going to die out sooner or later. Especially if they're going to have to give you babies. Yeah. Just imagine a pregnant mom without the right nutrition. That's not a good thing, right? Especially when her body needs to carry a baby. Yeah. All that nutrition is now concentrating on that baby. All the nutrition that they get go into producing the baby. Same with dubia roaches, they are living animals too. Mm -hmm. They need nutrients that is good enough for them to maintain the amount of babies that you expect from them in a consistent manner. We're not talking about, okay, they gave me babies last month. Why is it this month they don't? Why is it this month they die? Well, how long can they continue to give you babies? That's the question you must ask here. How long are they healthy enough to live on to produce dubias for you consistently? That's the thing that a lot of people fail to see. A lot of people fail to take notice of. Yeah. So this is actually a small secret actually that a lot of people don't know that um, your dubia must be kept very healthy in order to have a very 
successful breeding colony. Yeah. Number Even quantity. Well, too, mm. They need quality of life too. Yes. The number, the quantity is not important. You may have a small tiny um, colony, mm. but you'll be surprised if you keep it very healthy. Mm. This small amount of colony, right, can produce you enough babies to use yeah. consistently. Even mm -hmm. small colony can thrive if they are yes. so healthy. So the key here is mm -hmm. health. Yeah, the key is take note of the health of your dubia roaches. Mm. So keep in mind the next time if you want to expand your dubia roaches, you face problems like this, please sit down and take note. If everything is right, you feel that okay, you have been doing everything right, there is one thing missing. Are you giving them uh, quality of life? Are you giving them, uh, are you ensuring that they are healthy? So ensure, how to ensure, so you must be thinking now how to ensure that um, your colony stays healthy. Mm. Well, that's a very broad topic. That's a topic that can, I need probably one hour video yeah. time to talk about because nutrition, as you know, is a very complex thing. Because we are talking about a species, Dubia roaches itself. Mm. It, something that is healthy for another species may not be healthy for Dubia roaches. As you know, even for bearded dragon breeders, you know that bearded dragons can be um, certain food can be bad for Dubia roaches, same as how certain food can be bad for bearded dragons. Some, th some food can be, um, how to say, um, safe for certain animals but toxic for another species. So this is a very complex thing to talk about. So for today's topic, we are only going to um, let you viewers know that um, watch out for that um, health of your tubia. Don't spend too much time on trying to expand. Put some time into the health too. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to know more about how to keep your tubia roaches healthy, what's the secret to maintaining health of your tubia roaches, you can check out our uh, Bandcat Exotics Zoo Consultant and Wildlife Tour um, page. I'll leave the links down below. Mm -hmm. So there is our new firm where we dedicate a um, um, uh, special service for training um, people who need to know more than um, their, their, their know more to improve their colony or their breeding facilities for zoos and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hence, we Bankcare Exotics Zoo Consultant offers such services. So if you want to know more, go check out our page down below and I'll see you in our next video. And from there, we have also checked out some of the links that we put there. We have other videos that have some tips as well. Put all these tips together, probably you don't even need to engage any services out there. You can improve your own colony right now. Yeah. So I guess we don't want to drag this too long. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is all for today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we will see you in our next video. And perhaps if you are interested to start your own dubious colony, you can um, message us on Bandcat Exotic and we will leave the links down below. Mm -hmm. So we will see you in our next video. Bye. Alright, see you. Thank you for watching.